All right. Today is Tuesday, May 18th. This is a recap for the stock market activities today. Initially, the market was very quiet and then slowly but surely started to rally higher, favoring the disinflationary names over the inflationary names, meaning playing out lots of these oversold bounces that we've been talking about for a few videos now. However, by the end of the day, we saw a big reversal across all indices, no exception. And of course, the markets are waiting for the FOMC minutes coming up tomorrow. That will be the event of the week because we're waiting for the Federal Reserve's reaction regarding the CPI data and other inflationary data that we've been receiving. In addition, corporate earnings. Today we got Walmart, Home Depot, every single company reporting earnings, mentioning the risk of inflation and how the rise of input prices is impacting their bottom lines. In addition, lots of companies are already talking about raising prices to the end customer. So the evidence is already here. The evidence that the Federal Reserve has been waiting for is already here. Inflation is starting to pick up. In addition, the whole theory for the Federal Reserve was allowing inflation to rise higher will also unlock recoveries in the jobs market. That was quickly negated by the April's jobs report because while inflation has risen higher, the economy only recovered about 266,000 jobs, an extremely disappointing number, and perhaps the biggest miss for the jobs report in decades. Therefore, the FOMC minutes are extremely important because they will reflect how the Federal Reserve is thinking about the current situation. Of course, the market wants more clarity regarding the tolerance level for the Federal Reserve regarding inflation and also the outlook for tapering. We will talk about that during the conclusion of the video. We will also go through the charts, look at the reversal across many charts and whether there is a significance in the reversal today. But remember, the story tomorrow will be all about the bonds market not the stock market. The stock market will be secondary to the reaction in the bonds market. Furthermore, we saw the dollar index breaking a very important and very critical level. So we will go over that and a lot more during the charts analysis. But for now, let's start by covering the market's performance today. And here we go. The Dow Industrial Average closing in the red down 267.13 points or decline of 0.78%. The Nasdaq also closing in the red down 75.41 points or a decline of 0.56%. The S&P 500 also closing in the red down 35.64 points or a decline of 0.85%. And notice the nasty flush by the end of the day. The S&P 500 was trading pretty much at the flat line. Meanwhile, while the Nasdaq was in the green for the majority of the day, but we saw that nasty flush down by the end of the day, de-risking before the FOMC meeting. What about the sector's performance today? Leading the pack at number one, healthcare, and capturing the gold medal. At number two for the silver, utilities. And at number three for the bronze, real estate. Meanwhile, the laggards of the day led by energy, industrials, and materials. This was not a favorable day for the inflationary trade. Every single inflationary sector got whacked today. But the most important take here is look at the safety of the healthcare sector, specifically the big drug manufacturers. While we have this fight between tech, inflationary, disinflationary, back and forth, back and forth, the healthcare sector is saying, hey, I'm neutral here. You guys fight all you want. I will continue to rally slowly but surely. What about the market spread? The advance to decline ratio for the New York Stock Exchange. 36% advancing versus 62% declining. This is a decisive day to the downside for the NYSE, which is more inclusive than the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ actually closing with a positive market breadth because we have 50% advancing versus 46% declining. Although the NASDAQ closing in the red, the breadth of the NASDAQ was actually healthy today. So that is an important take. And the reason is the outperformance of the software sector and the oversold bounces in the mania names. Moving on to futures. What's going on here? Crude oil declining slightly today for about 1% losses for the WTI and crude oil Brent. But energy stocks got whacked today. 
massive losses for Exxon and Chevron today. We will talk about that during the heat map analysis. But for now, what about softs? The pain in lumbar, the sell-off, the correction, whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter. Lumbar going down again, and it is threatening to breach the 1000 level. Pay attention here, please, because the price action in lumbar is extremely important. If lumbar continues to decline day after day after day, breaching the 1000 level, then the market will start to panic because the inflation theory will also be under the microscope and you will see losses in the inflationary trade. Furthermore, the price action in lumber has important indicators and ramifications for the housing market. We have the housing bubble, prices going out of whack, and home buyers are chasing the price regardless paying above the asking price. And by the way, when we say home buyers, understand that corporations creating facade entities to appear as individuals are scooping up homes, creating the housing bubble. This is a topic that we should be talking about, but the media and the government isn't talking about it at all. The fact that corporations are scooping up homes all over the place. Of course, turning the fake virtual money in the stock market and using that to buy real assets, in this case, houses. So again, a big drop in lumbar prices, a crash, breaching 1000 will probably spill over to the housing market and you will start to see a crash in home prices, at least a mini, rapid, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. And if we see housing prices dropping rapidly, what do you think that would do to the stock market? Shaking out the confidence, all of these people sitting on paper gains, up 100, 200, 300%, never booked the profit, they will think again about booking their profits when home prices start to dive lower. Likewise, if the stock market starts crashing first, that will spill over to the housing market because you will see a lot of home buyers who bought overpriced homes due to the confidence in their stock portfolio losing that confidence. As they see their home prices diving lower, they want to capture whatever gains they still have in the stock market. So a housing crash, a stock market crash could happen hand in hand. A matter of fact, will happen hand in hand and lumbar could be a leading indicator. However, suppose lumbar is bought and we see a massive rebound higher and the rally goes on. That will be an indicator that the mania is not over and we will continue to see prices rising higher and higher and higher due to inflation. And therefore, the FOMC minutes are highly critical. You see how it connected things? from lumber to housing to stocks to the FOMC minutes, it's all connected. Anyhow, the other futures losing today were for coca. Meanwhile, we saw massive gains for coffee futures. And when you buy coffee, you gotta use some of that sugar. Sugar futures also closing in the green, in addition to cotton futures. I guess you gotta wipe your mouth when you drink coffee. Anyhow, what about metals? Noticeable declines for platinum futures. Meanwhile, palladium futures closing slightly in the green. However, the three most important metals, gold, silver, and copper, pretty much flat today in anticipation of the FOMC minutes. We have a critical day tomorrow between the action in the bonds market and metals all of these will be indicators to what to come but remember when it comes to copper i am still bullish copper because copper has legitimate demand behind it and while the demand for copper continues to surge higher the supply is nowhere to be found a matter of fact the picture is getting worse for the supply chain in copper we're seeing more regulations and more taxes in chile one of the top producers for copper globally what's going on with meats we have big gains for lean hogs and live cattle futures. Meanwhile, feeder cattle futures closing in the red. And the problem with meat inflation is becoming evident across the globe. Here we have Argentina, one of the biggest producers of beef, halting exports for 30 days to control inflation. Now, I'm not sure how halting exports will control inflation because adding more pressure on the supply chain is only going to push the prices higher. And we saw the prices of lean hogs and live cattle acting positively today. What about grains? We have gains for canola and corn futures. Meanwhile, declines across the board, modest declines led by oats, soybean meal, soybeans, soybean oil, and wheat futures. Moving on to the big casino, the options market. What's going on here? The tables were empty yesterday, and the tables remain empty 
today. No action, quiet casino, and of course waiting for the aftermath of the FOMC minutes. But again, it is tied to the retail participation. Retail investors and traders led the options mania, stampeding to buy call options, creating gamma squeezes all over the place. When the retail participation is slaughtered out of the market, all of a sudden the casino is empty again. But here we have the hottest table today and the hottest table for the week and perhaps the most important watch most important watch the most important stock to watch is tesla because tesla is becoming a pulse of the sentiment in the market furthermore it is also becoming a pulse to how resilient the retail investor is we know that retail are holding tesla some holding bags but most are holding gains and as we see the price in tesla declining every day tesla's down over 30 percent from the top how resilient is this uh, hoodoo you know let's hold like a bunch of donkeys diamond hands not taking profits which is by the way one of the cornerstones of investing you buy something low you sell it high you don't hold forever you moron but anyhow what will be the inflicting point when these retail faithful in tesla start pressing the sell button and capturing their gains that point will be extremely important to the fate of the entire stock market and the story of the 2020 bubble also remember if tesla crashes the amount of margin calls will be stunning anyhow tesla number one with about 700,000 contracts about 57% of those were calls. At number two, AMC, the gamma squeeze goes on. But notice that the call to puts ratio is starting to tilt, meaning that we are reaching a top in this leg higher for AMC, which uh, finished the day with about 585,000 contracts. About 68% of those were calls. At number three, Apple, no longer at number one, leading the market per usual. This time around at number three with 570,000 contracts, almost. About 63% of those were calls. Palantir also remains a hot name the last few weeks in the options market in terms of buying calls aggressively and that is causing a gamma squeeze playing on the heels of an oversold bounce. What about the unusual activities in the options market today? Starting with the ticker SNAP for Snapchat. And here we have uh, a spread, a bullish spread. The trader is buying the 57 and a half calls and selling the 60 and a half calls. And they are all expiring May 28th. And they are expecting Snapchat to rally all the way, but not over 13% by then. They paid about 70 cents a piece for the 57 and a half calls. They paid about, excuse me, they collected about 30 cents a piece for the 60 and a half calls they sold. All in all, the entry cost for this trade is 40 cents a piece, bringing the total to about $720,000. What about the trade for the ticker ARKG? This is for ARK Invest, genomic revolution, historic evolution. You know, just throw some uh, buzzwords to fool people into thinking that you are smart. And of course, we're talking about Tesla Witch Kathy Wood because this is an ARK Invest ETF. They're playing a bounce here by buying the 86 calls expiration date June 18th. With expectations that the name will rise over 10% by then, they paid about a buck and 10 cents a piece to enter this trade. All in all, paying $1.2 million. ARK Invest ETFs rallied today, but they closed well below the highs. So is the bounce? over already we'll see what about the trade for the ticker lspd this is for los santos police department just kidding this is for light speed and we have two trades for the name here by the same trader and this tells me that this is a holder of the stock and they are looking for protection to the downside they're expecting the name to decline they don't want to sell the stock but they want protection from the downside and therefore they're buying the 55 puts and they are selling the 70 calls it's a brilliant setup if you are a holder of the name, expecting a downside in the short term. These contracts are expiring May 21st. They paid about two bucks a piece to buy the 55 puts. They collected about 60 cents a piece by selling the 70 calls. All in all, the total entry cost for this trade is one buck and 40 cents a piece, bringing the total to about $700,000. What about the trade for the ticker triple Qs for the NASDAQ? 
We have a bearish bid here by buying the 284 puts expiration date June 30th. With expectations that the queues will drop over 12% and they were willing to pay about 2 bucks a piece to enter this trade. All in all, bringing the total to about $1 million. Now, this also could be a protection trade, an insurance trade for a trader who is overweight technology. Overweight Apple, Microsoft, etc. You're looking for protection, you buy puts on the queues. What about the trade for the ticker IGV, the software ETF? And a few days ago, I issued this tweet showing you technical signals indicating more pain to come for the IGV, the software ETF. And here we have bears betting heavily against the IGV by buying the 320 puts expiration date June 18th with expectations that the name will drop over 6% by then. They paid about 4 bucks and 75 cents a piece to enter this trade, bringing the total to about $2.3 million. Lastly, what about the trade for the ticker RAPT? This is a biotech company finishing the day with double digit gains and they're betting for more upside here of course the buyer of the trade the seller of the trade is bidding for a top it was a big move perhaps reaching a short-term top and reversing lower there are two sides to every trade but in this case they're buying the 25 calls expiration date july 16th with expectations that the name will rise over eight and a half percent by then they paid about four bucks and 40 cents a piece to enter this trade all in all bringing the total to about 2.2 million dollars Moving on to the heat map analysis. It was a bad day for the inflationary trade, whether we're talking about financials, energy, industrials, materials, all closing in the red. The names that managed to outperform in the market today happen to be the oversold names bouncing higher or technical conditions. We're talking about names like Palantir. We're talking about the software names. We're talking about the IPOs, the SPACs, the Chinese names. EV manufacturers, and solar, you know, the retail crowd's favorite names. The market is becoming a no country for young men, rewarding grandpa stocks, old school stocks, and punishing the sexy stocks in the market for the retail crowd. But here we have a bounce day. The question is, will the bag holders in these names see the pop as an opportunity to minimize losses, but also cut them and move along? Or will they react the opposite way of thinking that this is the bottom and names like Plug Power and Palantir and Fuel Cell and all of that garbage will recover all the way back to the highs and start to rally again and the mania will be back because these are the morons who will get slaughtered. When you see pops in names like this that fell out of favor in the market, you take that as an opportunity to trade the pop and reassess your holdings in the stock. Are you holding the bag? How bad? Can you cut losses and move along? What if you are holding a small bag and now you're back in the flat line or even making profits again? Will you take the profit and rotate to other names in the market or will you still be hopeful that there is more upside for the name? Moving on to the themes analysis, starting with the reopening trade. Not a good day all in all, but we have some green on the screen. For example, MGM, which was up significantly in the morning and I tweeted the night before that you will see the Robin Hood hits and the algos confusing the MGM that Amazon wants to buy you know mgm the movie studio with mgm the casinos two different companies but the robin hood hits did what i expected them to do and they bought mgm resorts two different companies but again ignorance is a bless you can trade these things and make money out of them what about the inflationary trade what's going on here a bad picture across the board but this is what we wanted to see we wanted to see sell-offs in these names heavy ones 10 15 percent to buy the dip in these inflationary names the question is when these names start to drop eight nine ten percent will you have the cojones to buy the dip at that point but here we have a stock in walmart closing in the green after reporting earnings in the morning and there was a debate before whether walmart should be in an inflationary list of stocks or not because isn't walmart a victim of inflation after all and i told you back then not the case because they have a pricing advantage they can weather the pain more than any other retailer because of their purchasing power in the supply chain a name like Dollar General, for example, their whole advantage is value. When they stop offering that advantage, 
to the end customer due to inflation, their competitive advantage is gone. Meanwhile, Walmart can dictate lower prices when others can't due to the size power of Walmart and therefore gaining more competitive advantage and more market share, making Walmart an excellent choice for an inflation stock. What about the disinflationary trade? We have a positive picture here. The majority of buying today was playing the oversold bounces in these names. We're talking about the high multiple mania names. But notice DR Horton, for example, closing in the red. A lot of people criticized me before for picking this name as a deinflationary stock that suffers under high inflation because if inflation is rising higher, home prices will rise and that will be good for home builders. The problem is, as inflation continues to rise higher, the expectations of tightening monetary policy and interest rates rising higher place an end to the housing bubble, the housing mania. Because when treasury yields rise higher, pushing interest rates higher, the demand for housing starts to diminish. And when that happens, you see housing prices rolling over and when home sellers realize that the mania is perhaps reaching a peak they panic sell their houses and that creates a phenomena where the supply exceeds the demand and kids this is how a housing bubble ends moving on to the charts analysis starting with the spy 30 minutes chart what's going on here we saw the bottoming abc pattern going all the way to the now resistance previous support of 417.30 only to reverse from that point consolidating in a bear flag formation gathering energy and that energy was about to be deployed one way or the other either giving it another shot at cracking 417.30 or reversing all the way down and as the spy started trading in the morning the picture became clearer that the next direction for the spy is reversing lower playing out the bear flag and if that is the case we look down to the next support level i gave you the level of 412 and this is exactly where the chart stopped today the main question is the 412 is the most important support level to hold if the spy starts to break away from that level to the downside then we will see the floodgates open for the spy perhaps going all the way to retest the bottom from last week what about the daily picture for the spy futures here is the chart no markings no annotations by me and this is what i said yesterday are we about to see a reverse abc pattern it looks that the reverse abc pattern is indeed playing and if it is playing the spy in the case of futures will go down all the way to 3960 as a minimum target the negative divergence in the rsi persists and we still have a significant loss of momentum according to the macd indicator so we haven't seen the bottom in the spy yet what about the cues 30 minutes chart failing to recapture the level of 226 as support and reversing from that same level twice we have the double rejection aka the double top what does that mean the cues have till tomorrow to negate the double top formation but what does that mean it means that cracking below 323 which already happened by the way but closing below 323 tomorrow will confirm the double top formation perhaps the triple cues is thinking about thinking about thinking about retesting the bottom from last week but if that doesn't hold then the center of gravity becomes you guessed it 313 and that will be an epic battle zooming out to the daily chart of the continuous contract of the queues what's going on here we talked about the symmetry between the last bottom from the last correction and the potential bottom for this correction and the symmetry did not play out today because the queues pretty much reversing the gains and closing in the red and when you see more and more violations in the symmetry that will enable you to see ahead of time that the bottom is not here and that the correction will resume in the nasdaq because it will come clearer to you that the symmetry is false and this time around this correction will be harsher than the one before we're not in a bottom yet the symmetry is extremely important what about the iwm small caps getting rejected from the resistance level of 223 and perhaps going all the way back to test the support of 212 what about the rot the russell 2000 
from a daily perspective. Again, if we are trading below 2,264, the bears have the advantage. We are looking for crossing the line in the sand on a weekly basis to confirm that the IWM will be the next target for this correction. Moving on to the dollar index, the Dixie, aka Tricky Dixie. It plays dead and it plays alive when it's not supposed to, only to surprise you right away with the opposite move. I've been expecting a pop in the US dollar for a while now, only to see the US dollar declining day by day, and now breaching the very important, very critical level of support of 90, closing the week below 90, and the floodgates will open against the US dollar. And of course, the movement in the US dollar is highly critically dependent on the FOMC minutes. So will the Federal Reserve save the stock market by saying they're not thinking about thinking about thinking about? Or will they save the US dollar, their beloved dollar, their weapon, by saying that perhaps they're thinking about thinking about thinking about tapering the cocaine operation? But is it really this simple? If the Fed announces tapering, market goes down, dollar goes up, yields go higher. If the Fed doesn't announce tapering, stocks go higher, dollar goes down, yields go down. Is it really this simple? Or could the move actually confuse us? Keep that thought. We will talk during the conclusion of this video. But for now, moving on to the chart of gold. Because gold has been on a breakout, but now it is reaching overbought conditions. Meaning we're expecting a top here in gold in the short term. And that leads the question, what will come hand in hand with a reversal in gold? Will the dollar index recover or will gold reverse in reaction of yields rising higher? You see how I'm confusing you right now? But this is what I go through. This is how I think. Looking at all of these charts, processing the information and trying to unlock the mystery and piece the pieces of the puzzle together. What about silver? Let's talk about the SLV, the silver ETF. Again, we're making a series of higher highs and higher lows. The assumption is that this leg we're on right now will surpass the previous highs, meaning perhaps silver is set to rally higher. We have a gathering of momentum in the MACD indicator, a positive divergence in the RSI indicator. Silver is looking extremely bullish. And so does gold, by the way. I'm not saying that gold should top right here and reverse and silver rallying in the opposite direction. Gold could rally hand in hand with silver. But the beauty of doing charts is that you have two different charts giving you two different point of views for the same object. What about the 10-year treasury? yield this will be the chart to watch tomorrow the reaction of the fomc minutes tomorrow will be a bond market story the reaction of the stock market will be secondary so we are watching this chart closely and we have the support of 1.62 basis points if that is violated again then the chart will be making lower highs and perhaps lower lows i am not liking the setup here for the chart of the 10-year treasury yield the common sense says if the Fed is about to announce tapering, then yields should rally significantly higher. But what if I told you that even if the Federal Reserve announces tapering, in the outlook, yields could also go down. Stick around for the conclusion of this video. Moving on to the TLT weekly chart. We've been waiting and waiting and waiting and watching and watching and watching. What will happen to this chart? On one hand, we have a potential for one of the most epic squeezes in history because the TLT is being heavily shorted. On the other hand, the shorts are shorting for a reason. that This is the end of a 30 years plus bull market in bonds. And the level I'm watching is 134 and a half breaking that level and you will see the floodgates opening for the TLT and yields will rally all the way to 2%. This is the expected outlook if you are in the inflationary camp, expecting inflation to rise higher. Yet the Fed also has the power to unlock that epic short squeeze in the TLT with their action or lack thereof. So the minutes will be extremely important. And once again, stick around for the conclusion of this video. What about the VIX? What's going on here? You got geniuses like Tom Lee, you know, the face ripper, saying that the VIX is dead. It's over. The VIX closing below 20. That means it's over. The bottom in the spy here. And here comes another face ripping rally. By the way, what happened to the first face ripper rally, which never happened? Pretty soon it's gonna be Tom Lee's face 
melting rally. This guy you're listening to right now showed you the weekly charts and told you that the rally in the VIX hasn't even started. The last pop was just a warm up, warming up the appetizer before the main course is served. What about Apple? What's going on here? Apple not looking so hot so. The destination was 130, 131. Meanwhile, the chart did not even attempt to go all the way to 130. It didn't even close the gap that it opened on the way higher. Reversing before the gap, that is always a bearish signal. You combine that with crossing the important support level of 125 and you got lower readings for Apple. What about Tesla, the souffle? What's going on here? The souffle is burning in the oven. It attempted to rally higher today, only to close at the flat line. The question is, will the chart go all the way down to 540? And what will be the reaction from 540? Because I am looking at the chart. I pretty much closed the majority of my puts in Tesla. I'm waiting and waiting and waiting for a potential of a bounce from an oversold condition in Tesla, the souffle. So for now, I am a souffle spectator. I am not playing the game. However, a reaction from 540 will put me back in the game. Just when I thought I'm out, they pulled me right in or back in, whatever the f*** it is. Bouncing off 540, this guy will be buying calls, breaking 540, closing below that level for the week, and this guy will be buying puts aggressively. Here's another chart I want to share with you, the XHB for home builders. Notice the top here. It is a defined top, a very strong top, and we have a bear flag formation playing to the downside, retesting the lows from the last turn down. If that low is violated, then the floodgates will open for the XHB home builders, Lennar, DR Horton, etc. We have an extreme negative divergence in the RSI and the MACD indicators. So this is one chart reaching a top and breaking. We have the main names exploding. We have the SPACs, the IPOs exploding. That's done. It's over. We have cryptos rolling over. And now we have home builders rolling over. Little by little, this bubble, this mania is coming to an end. It's like the Titanic. Certain sectors, certain manias start to end earlier than other parts. What about the tulip market? What's going on in the tulips? Starting with Bitcoin. And by the way, it, it's absolutely hilarious watching the coiners, the tulip chasers, turning against each other. Your tulip is bad. My tulip is bad. No, your tulip is bad. At the end of the day, they're all tulips. Who gives a shit? You're investing in a lottery ticket with zero intrinsic value, only rallying based on the sentiment and momentum. And by the way, for certain tulips like Doge, rallying based on one man's tweets, going higher when he pumps, going lower when he dumps. That's uh, the new generation of investors, the SPAC generation. But, 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 but you don't understand, really? Tulip number one, BTC, Bitcoin, the biggest tulip of them all, going all the way back again to 42,000. That is the main support level. Watch out, you gotta bounce from this level. Reaching oversold conditions, meaning that Bitcoin should be able to bounce higher from 42,000. But if that doesn't happen, oh boy. The floodgates will open and that will be it for the rally in Bitcoin in the 2020 bubble. Because breaking 42,000 will start panic selling, margin calls, shake out in sentiments. Even the believers, all of a sudden Michael Saylor will come out and say, I'm still a believer in Bitcoin, but I took profits. Oh really? You scam artist. What about Doge? Not doing anything. Consolidating, waiting and waiting and waiting for what? For a damn tweet. I'm a tweet based investor. You know, the emoji based investors and the mushrooms based investors. Now we have the tweet based investors waiting for a tweet from Reverend Elon Musk to move the asset up or down. Here is another tulip, ETH, Ethereum, doing a little better than Bitcoin and the likes. Ethereum still outperforming, trying to hold on and reclimb the first Fibonacci tracement level. It's a tough battle. In my opinion, ETH will lose the battle and go all the way down to lower. Retracement levels, support level number one, 2900, support level number two, 2500. And I won't be buying the dip until 2500 if it bounces before that and who cares it's a tulip after all but if it goes all the way to 2500 it will reach oversold conditions and the likelihood of a bounce will be a lot better than 2900 so i won't be trading eth playing an oversold bounce until 2500 
If it bounces before that, so be it. Moving on to the conclusion of this video. What do we have on the economic calendar tomorrow? The FOMC minutes. We're seeing voices getting louder and louder in criticizing the Federal Reserve. Corporate earnings mentioning inflation over and over and over again. Matter of fact, to the highest level in 11 years. And Fed critics are becoming louder. The likes of Larry Summers. We have Mohamed al -Aryan and the comments from Warren Buffett. So there is a lot of pressure on the Federal Reserve to start talking about talking about tapering we will see but how will the market react i will be watching the reaction in the bond market yields in the tlt the reaction in commodities specifically metals and lumber in addition to the reaction of the u.s dollar and finally the stock market the algos will play an important role tomorrow because the algos interpretation of the minutes will be very important for example let's say that the fed will come out and say that we're not thinking about thinking about thinking about and by the way there is no inflation we want to see more inflation the classic common sense reaction from algos will be pushing yields higher the nasdaq lower the us dollar higher and perhaps certain commodities also start to rally higher in reaction that the Fed will let inflation rise way out of control and way out of whack before reacting. And that reaction will come too late. In the meantime, inflation will rise significantly higher. So the algos revert right away to the inflationary mode, looking at the immediate horizon from letting inflation rise even higher. Or will the algos look at the longer term and react negatively? Crashing yields, crashing the dollar, crashing commodities, but perhaps rewarding the NASDAQ. You see the NASDAQ and the mania names trading heavily in the green. What would that mean? It means that the algos interpreted the Fed's decision, or lack thereof, of letting inflation rise even higher differently. The market is looking at a future where inflation will rise significantly higher out of control and that will actually start to hinder the economic recovery out of the COVID-19 crisis, meaning that the expansion will start to diminish, therefore siding with a deflationary camp. Pay attention now, it's almost over. Knowing that the algos can react one way or the other, the immediate knee-jerk reaction of the market should not be taken seriously meaning you shouldn't trade off the move, the immediate move right after the FOMC meeting. You gotta wait for confirmation. Let the market digest what happened because for all you know, the market could do a U-turn and reverse the knee-jerk reaction right after the announcement of the FOMC minutes. What about the earnings calendar? What's going on here? We have in the morning, Lowe's, and after the bill, Target, TJ Maxx, and Cisco. We have a critical day tomorrow. The question is, will you be awake or will you be sleeping again? Anyhow, that's all I got for you tonight, and I will talk to you again tomorrow. If you found the information presented in this video helpful, Please subscribe, press the like button, the notification button, and follow me on social media.